Clinton Yates, Woody Page, Kevin Clark, Bill Barnwell. Thursday night football, Commanders Eagles. That's a good one. We'll go around the horn on Pats to victory. LeBron messing around, getting a third straight triple double. Only thing that wasn't, it wasn't an NBA Cup game, which he dreamed of playing when he was a kid. And Caitlin Clark golf. Oh my goodness. I'm not standing anywhere near a non pro teeing off at a pro am. But like the lethal shooter she is, I understand it now. Center the next one. Let's go around the horn. I understand it now. Uh, uh, that's how I'm going to take every discussion when I give out the board. I understand it now. <laughs> Thursday Night Football, a great one, I say again. Washington, Philadelphia, 7 and 3 versus 7 and 2. How great? Biggest Washington Philly game in three decades. Dan Gelson, AP writes. That's Randall Cunningham, Seth Joyner, Art Monk, Daryl Green days. Mm. Commanders off the narrow loss to Pittsburgh on a short week. Philly, kind of sneaky with that five-game win streak, dating back to Syriati and the Fed, that game versus Cleveland. Mm. Bill Barnwell, around the horn to you on the team you'd rather be tonight. It's the Commanders, right? They're playing with house money. Nobody expected them to be 7-3 and three at this point in the season. Mm -hmm. The Eagles, this was the exact point last year where things started to go south. Big Dom got kicked off the sideline, and it went spectacularly <laughs> south. I don't think that's going to happen this year because they have made upgrades on the defense. That has been what's kept them going during this five-game win streak. At the same time, Look at who they've played. Joe Burrow, who is a very good quarterback, but Daniel Jones, Deshaun Watson, Trevor Lawrence, and Cooper Rush. Not exactly the superstars mm. of the NFL quarterback game right now. They have forced 10 turnovers over the last three games. They are facing the offense, though, in the Commanders that has turned the ball over just four times all season. Yeah. Incredible, Incredible for a rookie. So that is the difference. That's where I think this game is going to be decided. Can the Eagles force uh, takeaways from this offense that has been so good at avoiding them all season? So rather be Washington going into tonight. Kevin Clark, same question to you around the horn. Bill Barnwell, this is not about expectations. It's about roster talent. That's what this question is about. You know, oh, we have lower expectations in Washington. Pressure is a privilege. This, mm, this Philadelphia this, team this is uh. further along in their life cycle. That's why tonight I'd rather be the Eagles. Maybe in three years, two years, I'd rather have Jaden Daniels and be the commanders. But for tonight, this matchup, first of all, it's got a real game of the year potential, but it favors mm. Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. A.J. Brown is one of the best man coverage wide receivers in football. Washington is top 10 in running uh, man defense this year. Jaden Daniels, amazing on 10-plus yard air yard throws. Meanwhile, Philadelphia is top three in stopping that. Mm. So this is a matchup mm. that favors Philadelphia. Right. I'm going with them tonight. Going heavy into the stats on the back end, but the answer is Philadelphia for Clark. Woody Page, who would you rather be going into tonight? Well, I'd rather not be uh, Bill Byrne bad because whoa, he's supposed to be whoa, the NFL whoa. expert. And the first time I've been on the show with him, and that's what you come with, Bill? <laughs> you talking about house money? They're going to give all the money back to the house. I'd rather, much rather be the, the Eagles than the Commanders. That, what a bad pick that all was. Right. I, I'll give you a fun <laughs> football fact, Mr. NFL expert. A.J. Brown, when he plays, and he is going to play, the team is 6-0. and when he plays, they average more than 30 points a game. When he doesn't play, they average less than 20 points a game. So mm -hmm. give me the Eagles tonight. Uh, we watched uh, the quarterback and the running back last week just tear apart the Cowboys. And you don't think they can do that against the Commanders? And they got still one of the best defenses. They brought in Vic Fangio. People run his defense like all over the league. And Oh, yes, absolutely. If that wasn't clear, Tony... <laughs> Everything was clear. <laughs> I, 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 it was clear when you explained stats to Bill Bardwell. You may not know what you were walking into, but first we go to Clinton Yates. Who'd you rather be tonight? The reason I'd rather be the Eagles, Tony, is because I think the Eagles are a more advanced form of what the commanders are trying to be. You look at that backfield in terms of what the quarterback and the running back do in Philadelphia, that's precisely what Washington is trying to get to. And the reason why they couldn't beat the Steelers last week is because they were not there yet. Also, Philly's playing this game at home, which doesn't seem like that big of a deal, but in a division, that matters in terms of what your advantage is in that game. Now, more largely, though, what's happening with these two teams in terms of their tracks, who Washington is, who Philly is, Philly is closer to the 
mark right now, and that's fine. But if Washington wins this game, I don't think it's a huge surprise. It's just an indication that maybe, just maybe, they truly are ahead of the curve and where they want to be. And this isn't isn't just a blip on the radar. Mm-hmm. And okay, so this is a huge game tonight, in my opinion. Statement game, it seems like, from Yates. Bill Barnwell, yes. after the horn to you. Yeah, Woody Page said the, the Eagles dominated the Cowboys last week. Why can't they do that to yeah. the Commanders? <laughs> the Commanders are a better team than the Dallas Cowboys. We've seen this entire season of football. I don't think that's anything crazy. Also, their quarterback is probably going to throw for more than 40 yards in this game, which the Cowboys did wow. not do last that's week. Okay, Woody is no way frightened by what not Bill Barnwell's cooking up over there. Okay. <laughs> Uh, never change, Woody. Never change. We've been horned. We'll move on. Our next story I want to get your take on. What Deion Sanders said on FS1 Speak here. Will you step in and do some of that if it's the wrong organization to say he ain't going there? Yeah. Yeah, but I'm not going to do it publicly. I'll do it privately. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. you said you're going to be dead. You're going to be dead. You're going to be dead. Oh, your dad. Cows, come on. Yes, sir. And, 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 and with Travis as well. Mm-hmm. Talking about Travis Hunter and, of course, his son, Shador Sanders, and getting involved in the draft process and where they may end up. Kevin, how'd you hear Dion there? And do you think it's within the realm of possibility Dion Sanders can control who drafts Shador or Hunter? He can try. If it was possible to determine your destination, Caleb Williams would not be getting sacked more than any other quarterback in football in Chicago right now. I think maybe it can be tried. You know, Jordan Reed, our colleague, has uh, uh, Shadur going number one to Cleveland and Travis Hunter going number two to New England. Cleveland's a really bad place for quarterbacks. So, yes, if I was, if my son, Teddy Clark, were about to be drafted as a quarterback to the Cleveland Browns, I would move <laughs> heaven and earth to make sure he did not go there. However, I think it's a different world than when John Elway did it 40 years ago. Mm, with Eli Manning, it was okay. a different situation because, frankly, Phillip Rivers in that draft, Ben Roethlisberger was in that draft. There were other options. I don't know how this is going to shake out. I understand the need uh, to, to try. Your geography is destiny for quarterbacks. I understand the need to try to control the process. I just don't know if a team is going to listen to Deion Sanders in that spot. Woody Page, do you believe it's within the realm of possibility Deion could affect who drafts, Shador Sanders or Travis Hunter? Absolutely. Kevin's forgotten. We're living in a brave new world now, and the athletes have a lot more power. And even their fathers, and you brought up John Elway and Eli Manning, and their fathers uh, were really mm-hmm. responsible yeah. for them not ending up in the places they were drafted by, Baltimore and San Diego. And I see it happening. And it wouldn't be a first for Dion. He actually kind of controlled where he played when he was a player in the NFL. He went to one uh, franchise and they said, we want you to take one of these mental tests. And he went, I'm out of here. I'm not taking your test. I took them in college. And so I don't think there's a realm of possibility that he won't do it because he has maintained. This isn't the first time he said that. He told us this months ago. He said, I don't want him to play in certain places. He wants warm weather or a dome stadium. He wants a team that's got a winner, and he wants a quarterback mm-hmm, coach sure. that yeah. can work with his son like he has been. Good. So, yes, it's going to happen. So you better, if you are a team like, say, the New York Jets, you better just back off because you're not going to Well, that's like it. a quarter of the league right now you might rule out. Does he want a toilet made of gold as well? Clinton Yates, around the horn to you. That story is actually better than what he tells it. What happened was Dion was forced to take a test, and when he asked what t- when the team was picking, he said, I'll be gone before then, and just walked out of the room, which is hilarious. <laughs> anyway, I think what Dion is doing is, in fact, <laughs> tremendous when we look at what the day of the games are in terms of where we are in general. The NWSL doesn't even have a draft anymore. The idea of player control over this kind of thing is very concerning in terms of, like, where we think we're going to be overall with football, and Dion knows that. And if you're going to be the kind of team that takes a player that doesn't want to be there and you've got to deal with that guy that is already not a smart move because of the groundwork that he's laid I think this is in fact genius by prime because it's not necessarily genius. trying to game the system he's just saying hey y'all don't know what you're doing I do I don't want to be a part of it I tell you all the time quarterback is the worst coach position in the league Dion's not going to walk right into a situation in which that is obvious and put his kid in okay. a bad circumstance but this makes all the sense Clinton, the there is going to be an NFL yes. draft this year it's they're not ruling out the draft and the next whatever you know it's going to happen right. for sanders and for hunter 
I think what I'm saying is that the idea in general of, yo, you can determine where you want to go if you've got any kind of social leverage or skill leverage is not that crazy. There was a time when that was looked at as completely insubordinate, completely ridiculous. We are so far okay. beyond that that I think that teams are going to understand that in terms of what they're bringing as a product of Team Sanders, if you will, with all two of those guys. As in Hunter and Bill Barnwell, your view of it? Yeah, this is the Haley's comment of football, right? Every 21 years, a quarterback has his dad say, ah, I don't think you're going to play there. John Elway in 83, Eli in 2004, Shitter Sanders probably in 2025. We're going to have like Bronze Mahomes in 2020, uh, 2046, uh, you know, not going to whatever the Jets probably are not going to be a team that uh, treats their quarterbacks well at that point. What's interesting about this to me, though, is the Travis Hunter conversation because we've seen teams with quarterbacks who have wanted to go to a different place where they've been steered to a different location. We have not seen that for wide receivers or cornerbacks. To Clinton's point, we don't think that way about how wide receivers are coached or cornerbacks are coached. No one ever said Andre Johnson should have asked for a trade because he was going to be stuck with bad quarterbacks for the next decade. And so with Travis Hunter, I want to see what does that mean from Deion Sanders' perspective. So you want to lead him to a team that has a great quarterback. Does so he want to lead him to a team where he's going to be allowed to play both ways? I think that's the more interesting discussion here because it is more unprecedented relative to what we've seen from uh, draft players. Kevin history. Clark, last word. Yeah, the Travis Hunter thing to me is just as important because a team is going to need a plan, a snap count. How are you going to use them? The scheme stuff, that is as important as where Shadur goes. Travis Hunter needs to be treated like an absolute unicorn, and only a couple teams are capable of doing okay. that. I mean, we've seen wide receivers affect change after they were drafted to where they're going, but maybe not. Although there was some Matt Schaub erasure, by the way, for the Andre Johnson there, Barnwell. Hey, real quick, Teddy Clark. The rising two-year-old almost, the Teddy Clark. Tell everybody what he calls the game of football right now. He says he calls it Hunt Hunt, which I think uh, <laughs> makes him I love that. qualified to coach about 20 NFL Well, teams. then more from Hunt Hunt in by yourself. Yeah. She come. Lakers 128, Grizzlies 123 in a fun yet non-NBA Cup game. LeBron, third straight triple-double. Think about how absurd that sentence is at 39 years of age. Three straight triple doubles. Four on the season, 35 points, Lakers get to seven and four. On the sustainability of that play from LeBron and what we're seeing with the J.J. Redick molded Lakers around the horn to Los Angeles, Clinton Yates. I'm buying this because this is the best part of the experience right now if you're a Lakers fan. Yes, J.J. has that team motivated. Yes, they look like they know what they're doing. But if Anthony Davis can't stay on the court, whether it's an ankle or an eye or whatever it may be, LeBron having tremendous performances night in and night out, we are watching greatness. Do not take it for granted, even if the ceiling on this team isn't super high beyond just, say, the NBA Cup. Well, you appreciate the showtime of it, but about J.J. Reddick getting players to play. We did a story a week ago in a loss to Memphis calling out the guys who were non-LeBron. How did you see it last night, Clinton? I loved it. I think J.J. Redick has brought accountability back to this team by stating we know what the standard is. It doesn't necessarily have to be winning everything every night, but you better play like you belong there, and that's been the case. Woody Page with the buy or sell with the Lakers. I'm buying LeBron being the second best valuable player in the league right now, and Anthony Davis has been listed at the top of the MVP players. Uh, it's Joker, and then it's LeBron. Mm, LeBron is never too early for some MVP from Eight our assists, MVP. Yes, nine okay. Nine rebounds. I just think he's playing well, in, and he's doing it in 35 minutes. It's not that That's they're forcing right, him to play 40, 40 minutes. Kevin Clark, around the horn to you with the buy with the sell with the Lakers. First of all, I'm buying those Vancouver era jerseys. Those are beautiful, but I, I don't know. I'm going to withhold judgment on the Lakers. I think they have an identity. They've won all six of their home games. They're one and four on the road. They've won every single game when they're, they score over 115 points, but we know what they are. Uh, James and Anthony Davis either assisted or scored 30 of the 37 fourth quarter points. We kind of know what they are. I'm not ready to make any broad conclusions against the Grizzlies team in those beautiful jerseys without John Moran. And Bill Barnwell. 
Yeah, J.J. Redick has sort of shifted things just a tiny bit. We didn't really see it last night, but we've seen it over the course of this season, which is he's made Anthony Davis the focal point of this offense for stretches. LeBron's running the lowest usage rate he's ever had as a pro, mm -hmm. but he's averaging the second most assists per game he's had in any season as a pro. Anthony Davis was not great last night because of the foul trouble, but he's averaging 30 and 11 so far this year. I think J.J. Redick's biggest improvement so far has been being able to convince LeBron you can maybe take some nights where you're not going to be the focal point for 35 minutes. Which is minutes interesting. Game. So that would be a note in that usage rate for sustainability, maybe, even though yeah. as, as crazy as that sounds, a 39 year old can sustain a, a triple double pace like this, but play like this. We'll move on. Buy or sell too. Hut, hut. Football. Look ahead to Sunday. Ravens Steelers. Oh, yeah. First place in the division. Pittsburgh first divisional game of the year a stat on Lamar one in three in his career versus Pittsburgh that he's only started four games versus Pittsburgh is shocking but one in three Lamar hinted he couldn't explain it when he said I can't explain it Kevin Clark <laughs> do you expect this version of Lamar to struggle on Sunday in Pittsburgh no, I don't. I can explain it. This is a different version of Lamar. In the four previous games, he's had seven interceptions. Well, guess what? Even though the Steelers' defense is really good, the Ravens have not thrown an interception at a turnover in three straight games. That's one of the highest marks of their franchise history. So, for me, this comes down to just a couple of plays. I'm favoring the Steelers here, but it has nothing to do with Lamar Jackson. He's going to play really, really well. George Pickens is the best deep ball receiver in football. The Ravens are giving up explosives at an alarming rate. Russell Wilson and throw these mm. moon balls. He connects on enough to squeak this one out. The last eight meetings between these two teams have been a one-score game. It's going to happen again. Steelers squeak it Bill out. Bill Barnwell? Yeah, Steelers done a great job of keeping Lamar Jackson in the pocket. He has his design runs. He's going to get those yards, but they do a really good job with their rush discipline. They don't get out of, out of whack, don't create opportunities for Lamar to run. And in years past, he was 11th in the NFL. Plasky, David Dennis Jr., Frank Isola on a back-to-back, -back. Bill Barnwell. I need some help here, national panel. Any lip readers? I'm not, I'm not sure. I got this last one. I ah, wish, wish. that's what I got. I got Steph and Clay, one of those NBA Cup moments you grew up dreaming about. Also, NFL news of the day, the Colts go back to Anthony Richardson. Let's go around the horn. I think that's the you should be taking the left. Nice. I think he was talking about David in college. I think that's what he was saying. He said something about David. I think Frank needs a little load management. NFL news of the day. Indianapolis Colts Shane Steichen announcing they're going back to Anthony Richardson as starting quarterback this week. Let's talk it out. The decision to bench Richardson was for the best chance of winning, Steichen said at the time. Since they went to Joe Flacco, they lost both games, and now it's back to Richardson. Maybe in two weeks you could take time, catch your breath, have the game slow down. We've seen that with other quarterbacks before, but Bill Barnwell around the horn to you. What are you reading into the return of Richardson? Tony, this is the ultimate NFL example of couldn't this have been an email instead of a meeting? <laughs> Did we really have to sit Anthony Richardson <laughs> on the bench for two weeks to learn this lesson, which we apparently have resolved after two bad Joe Flacco games? I mean, this move did never made sense for on-field reasons. Anthony Richardson was always going to be a project coming out of school. We know what Joe Flacco is. He's almost 40. He's going to throw a bunch of interceptions. He might get hot and have one or two really good games. He is not the future of this franchise. And so I'm not sure what Anthony Richardson is supposed to have learned watching Joe Flacco play. It just feels like a punishment for Anthony Richardson telling the truth about what happened and how he came out for a play. Really, if he had just lied, none of this would have happened and everything would be better off for mm -hmm. him. Frank Isola, what are you reading into the Colts' decision today? Uh, well, c come on, Bill. I mean, you said he could have played well for two games. He played well for five games last year for Cleveland. I'm talking about Joe Flacco threw 13 touchdown passes, and they made the playoffs. So the Colts were looking to catch lightning in a bottle, and it comes at a time right after Anthony Richardson, you know, tapped out of a game. And I think at that point there was nothing wrong with it. Let's look around the league. You know, Bryce Young, what's happened to him? In and out. You know, Jaden Daniels with the, with the commanders, he's been good enough to play. Caleb Williams, you don't know about. All these young quarterbacks, the idea that you just have to give them the job and you live with it, you know, no matter if they win or lose, I have no problem with what the Colts did. Now's the good time. Go back to David it. David Dennis Nothing Jr., wrong. your read on it? 
Uh, well, the difference between Richardson and those quarterbacks that you mentioned is that the Colts brought Richardson in saying from the very beginning he is going to be a project. Have patience with the guy. We're going to see what he, you know, what he can contribute. He's younger than those guys that you mentioned, even though he came into the league a couple years ago. And so you have Richardson all of a sudden you're pulling him from the uh, from the game be seemed looks punitive because the guy said he was tired. You can't have it looks like an organization to me that looks like they just do not have direction right now. Is this a project? This is a guy that you're working on for the future, or do you want to win now with Joe Flacco? And right now they're in some purgatory where they're really not accomplishing anything. And Bill Plaschke ran the horn to you. Oh, I think they have clear direction, David. I think they did exactly the right thing. You had to send a message to. Anthony, I sent a message to the locker room that this was not going to be accepted, that you can't tap out of a game. They had to let him know for him to become, become a leader again. They had to break him down let everybody know he was going to pay the price for this. And he paid the two-game price. And he watched and he learned and maybe he grew up a little bit and maybe he got scared straight. And we'll see. But I think it's important that what they did was very important. It shows that they have direction. I think that moving forward, the fact that Flacco had six turnovers in two games probably helped move this mm -hmm. process along a little bit. But it's still a very important process. Hey, but Dennis Jr., you're shaking your head no. Uh, yeah, because what, what, what did you accomplish by punishing the guy and putting him out for two games? He didn't, you know, you just taught him to lie. That's basically what you taught him to do. You didn't teach him to have better conditioning. He doesn't learn anything playing behind Joe Flacco. All he learned is that next time he's tired, don't say you're tired. And what are you actually accomplishing Frank by Isola? doing Frank Isola? Well, number one, you, why are you signing Joe Flacco? There's a reason why Joe Flacco's on the team. He knows at some point he's probably going to play. David's right about a project. But when the project is struggling, there's no. It's okay to take a couple of steps back and say, you know what? Let let's let uh, you know another quarterback in. And you know the head coach has to take the temperature of the locker room. And the mm -hmm. players might have been losing faith, and they said, you know what? Hey, let's go for it right now. If it works out, great. If not, then we'll go back to Anthony Richardson, and that's what they I, did. I appreciate that you guys are really locking in on that moment where he asked out of the game three weeks ago. But the reality is this is a quarterback who's completing passes at a rate the lowest in the NFL over the last 20 years, right. under 50%. Last word, Bill Plaschke. Yeah, if, if, they, 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 if they did not bench him, they would have lost the locker room. They would have lost him. They're trying to salvage something out of this. And he's a project. They know it. The rest of the season will be a project for him. This is no problem, no problem with it. We've been horned. We'll move on. Playoff rankings week two, or edition two, I should say. It keeps on getting better. They, they put the bracket out there, and they also tell us the first two out. I love the way it looks. And what we have now, as far as you people, is everybody bemoaning the placement while decrying that no team has beaten anybody. I love this. This is why we have a playoff. You get to beat bodies. Oregon, Texas, BYU, Miami, top four in the bracket. In the bracket, first out, Georgia and SMU. Frank Isola, around the horn to you on edition two of the ring. Yeah, it's hard not to look at Georgia, and to me, they're clearly one of the top 12 teams. But this is what's exciting about this format, and it makes every regular season count. So Georgia is going to play a game against Tennessee, which is essentially an elimination game. And I'll tell you another thing, that right, another team that's sitting pretty right now is Indiana. They're going to play Ohio State eventually. Even if they lose, it looks like they're going to stay in that top 12. And God bless Penn State. They didn't beat Ohio State. They did beat Washington last weekend, and they somehow moved up. So good for David them. Dennis Jr., take away from addition two. Yeah, I want to stick with Georgia here. There's a lot of Georgia fans who woke up kind of confused this morning. Like, we're ranked 12th but we're not one of the 12th best teams in the country. <laughs> like, how does that uh, quite work out? We're right on the outside. We've beaten the, uh, SC, the best team uh, in the SEC. We've beaten Clemson, who may be the best team in the ACC uh, or win the tournament, uh, ACC championship by the end of this season. There's chance of them doing that. And the idea is that they have not done they, – they're not good enough because the offense is not good enough. Like, it's really confusing if you're a Georgia fan and it feels like there's a belief that eventually they'll get back in there and earn their way back in there. But why not just put them in there now? Bill Plaschke, around the horn of you. The top teams will always work themselves out. They always do. Every year we complain. Every year it works <laughs> out. I'm, I'm looking down at number 24, Army. Army's the team I'm looking at. They, it, Tulane made it the, the, yeah. the full of 25 now. Mm -hmm. the, Tulane will be on their schedule. Notre Dame's on their schedule. Yeah, the path is clear for Army to sneak past Boise State and get into the mm. top 12. That would be so awesome. Oh, the path for Army. is clear. Some thought Army wasn't getting respected. You're seeing a path for Army. Bill Barnwell around now. the horn to you. No idea why Penn State is as high as it is. 
in these rankings. They have one win over a ranked opponent. That was Illinois, which has lost three games. Their most noticeable win, their most significant win, they should, is what? Beating USC in overtime where they needed a comeback? Sub-500. Hey, USC? hey, 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 hey. Tennessee. Easy. Tennessee. <laughs> Tennessee. <laughs> Tennessee has one loss. They beat Alabama. Is that not a more impressive mm, okay. win than anything Penn State has? I don't see this This one. is what I'm hearing. Oh, Texas, who have they beaten? Their best win is Vanderbilt. Oh, who has anybody beaten? Frank, I sell around the horn to you. Yeah. You know, there are seven teams in the SEC right now that have two or fewer losses. And we all know that the SEC has the best conference. But clearly, some of these teams are going to be left, uh, going to be on the outside looking in. One thing about that Army-Notre Dame game, that's going to please.